The following message is best viewed on an oscilloscope. I'm Connie Potter, co-producer of the Big Bang Stage and co-founder of the Big Bang Collective. Welcome to the biggest physics conference of the year and welcome to the very special program we've put together for you today and tomorrow, sharing the excitement, importance, passion and fun of science. We've had some fantastic events on today's Big Bang Stage and it's nowhere near over. Now we have physicist Martin Rybar from Charles University setting up a bar in his lab and teaching you about physics, the beer way. This is a hugely popular workshop that we have run at our science pavilions at music festivals. And we're very fortunate to have Martin available to run one just for ICHEP 2020. As the song goes, it's five o'clock somewhere. So run to the fridge, grab a couple of beers and watch the magic happen. Over to you, Martin, cheers. Okay, thank you, Connie. Uh, thank you for the very nice introduction and, and hello from Prague. So uh, originally, actually, I wanted to give you a, a talk on some effective quantum field theory that you can see here on the board. But I think that it will be better if we, if we drink some beers. And usually, I mean, it's much better to drink uh, beers with, uh, with your friends. So uh, just let me show you that I am not, I am not uh, alone here, actually. But I have a couple of uh, colleagues and friends, so just let me show you the, the, the room, so you can you can see them, okay? And uh, I will distribute them uh, a couple of beers that I have here. So and then there will be more coming during the uh, during the workshop. Okay, uh, so when Connie asked me like uh, to do this workshop, I was like, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I love beer and I am a physicist, so let's do some, some physics of beer. So it will be a combination of, uh, let me turn back the camera, actually. So uh, I will show you uh, some uh, experiment with beers and I will try to describe you some basic laws of, of, of physics uh, using using the beer. But uh, maybe the first question you can ask is actually, how old is the beer? And so for that, let me actually share a couple of slides I have here. Okay. okay. So, so the beer is the first, uh, third uh, most uh, popular drink uh, on the planet uh, Earth, after the, the water and, and tea. Uh, if you watch the, the new movie, uh, David's Particles, uh, you might actually notice that uh, among uh, particle physicists, maybe uh, it's not a tea, but it's, uh, it's a coffee. And actually, maybe it's the beer, not, the, not even the coffee. But yeah, so, so this is the current state of art. So the first is water, then we have, uh, we have a tea, and then, uh, then we, have, uh, we have beer. Beer is so popular that it's actually, it has been on the moon or it's still on the moon, but it's not like that, that like uh, astronauts, they don't drink, they don't drink a beer uh, on, the, on the moon, but uh, there is actually a crater that is called, that is called beer, which I actually learned uh, only very, uh, very recently. Okay, so how old is the beer? So from some uh, archeological findings, uh, we know that uh, the beer was brewed uh, even like a 13,000 years ago. Unfortunately, we don't know uh, the taste uh, of that beer from, from that time, but we, we know that there was uh, some beer brewing from, from that time. 
But then we know a bit more details uh, from about two or three thousand years ago. Uh, we know it from uh, from uh, Hammurabi uh, laws. So there are some laws about uh, about uh, some regulations of the beer brewing, and also some uh, regulation actually of the of the beer of the beer drinking. Then uh, we actually know a couple of more things from from Gilgamesh. It was even in the in in a, in a Gilgamesh in the epic, and actually uh, uh, we know a lot of, about a beer from Mesopotamia. Uh, there was a, a goddess uh, of uh, of beer. It's called Ninkasi, and this is like a uh, as we imagine that as she could look like. Uh, so you can see that she's holding some. Uh, some uh, glass of beer, some some grains, and probably some uh, some hops. And actually, uh, there is an old uh, clay tablet with the recipe of the first beer. So uh, you can you can if you can translate it, you can brew the beer how it probably tasted. Uh, it's like a two to three thousand years ago. This this beer was actually brewed, and it was a bit rubbish. It's something completely different than the beer that uh, we have we have these days. Let me just move the camera a bit. Okay. And uh, the beer was also very important uh, in ancient Egypt. So uh, the slaves that uh, were building uh, pyramids they didn't eat a normal meal like a bread or something like that. But instead of, of that, they uh, they drank a liquid bread. That's something in the Czech Republic we usually call a beer a liquid bread. And so uh, the slaves that were building the pyramids, uh, they had some type of, of beer. It was probably again very different than the beer as we know it from uh, from today. And so since they were drinking a lot of beer, it's maybe. Maybe uh, the pyramids were not designed to be a pyramid, but maybe uh, uh, they were designed to look uh, something completely, uh, completely different. And actually, this picture was was uh, drawn by by Daniel, that is sitting here with me in the in the room. And now I noticed that I distributed beers, but without distributed uh, the opener. Okay, important. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the. Uh, to the composition of beer, how, how we make the beer. So for, for to make a beer, we need uh, basically four uh, main uh, substitutes. Uh, so that's water, uh, grains, uh, yeasts, and hops. Actually, you can make a beer without hops, but then it's it's missing a, a lot of lot of taste, the, the typical bitterness uh, of the uh, of the beer. So. To prepare a beer, the, the process is called brewing, which is done in breweries, but you can actually do it also home. It's quite complicated. So you start from grains, you, you make uh, malt, then you do some boiling of the wort and a lot of uh, different uh, biotechnological uh, steps. But this is not physics. This is really uh, technology, chemistry, and, 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 and biology. In terms of the physics, beer is actually very, very simple. So what you need to make a beer, as I said, is you need water, you need some plants, the grains, uh, and then you need yeast. You even don't need the hops. Okay, so first how we get to so get, get to get water, that's, that, that's easy. So how we get plants? So plants, it's just basically a transformation of energy. So you probably know photosynthesis. So that's a process where you have the, the CO2, uh, then you have the, the water, uh, then you have an incoming uh, energy from sun. Then uh, there is a, then in, in a plant, uh, there, there is a chlorophyll that turns these uh, three main uh, components into O2, so oxygen, and into a sugar. And we need sugar to make, uh, to make beer. There is a process that goes the other way around. Uh, it's called breathing or uh, cellular respiration at the level of the of the, of the cells in our bodies, it's exactly the opposite process. So we breathe uh, uh, oxygen, and then in our bodies uh, there is a reaction where there is an oxygen plus sugar. It releases energy, so we can we can move and we can do stuff. 
and as exhaust there is the the CO2 and uh, and water. There is another process that is a bit less uh, effective because there is no uh, oxygen at the beginning, so there is just sugar. And we want to trans transform the sugar to something else without the presence of the oxygen. We need yeasts. So the yeasts, they take some amount of the energy, they release uh, CO2, water, and ethanol. In this process, this is trash, but for us, this is really the gold because that's how we make how we can make uh, the beer. So this is basically the physics that is behind, behind, uh, behind the brewing. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's talk about some basic properties uh, of beer. So first we can start with the, with the color. So what's color? So if you look at the sun, we see something between yellow and, and white, but this is not a fundamental uh, this is not a fundamental color because the, the white light is a composition of many different colors, uh, many different wavelengths. And if you take a, a prism, so for example, this is uh, part of the, uh, you can find it on my, one, of, one of my uh, favorite uh, LP, uh, the Dark Side of the Moon from, from Pink Floyd. Uh, so you have the prism, there is the incoming uh, white beam, and then uh, the, what is going out is these different wavelengths in forms of the different, uh, different colors. So now let me stop the, the sharing. So what, what happens with the beer, so if I take, uh, if I take a, a beer, I will need those two later, so I will maybe take this one. So one thing that is really challenging about doing this workshop is that you cannot practice because when you practice, you consume a lot of beers and typically you will not finish the, your practice session. Okay. It's really good. Okay, so if you look at the color of the beer, you can see that it's something, it's like a, it's like a bit like a yellow or, 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 or goldish. And it means that there is an incoming beam of uh, white light, which is these many different uh, colors, colors in it. But then there is an absorption in the beer and only part of the spectrum is, is going out. So basically the beer filters some colors. It typically filters the, the, the low and the high wavelength uh, of, uh, of, the, of the light. So the, the blue colors and then the colors that are ripped the blue, a bit of the green, and also uh, part of the spectra that is really red. And you will end up with something that is like a, this uh, really, really nice, a really nice color. Okay, so how about the, uh, the, the foam? So maybe let me just share this. Uh, So here you can see on the picture how basically the, the, the beard uh, absorbs some, uh, some parts of the, of the spectrum. But then you can ask, uh, what is the, why is the, the foam white? Why, is, why it doesn't have the, the same color as the, as the beer? Uh, the answer is very simple. It's because there is not enough beer, not enough liquid in it. You have uh, mostly, uh, you have a lot of, lot of air there which doesn't absorb any, any light. So you'll end up with like a, this, uh, this, this white color. Uh, if you open something like some dark beer, like a, like a Guinness, for example. Oh. Okay. That I have this. So if you open Guinness, you will actually see that it's really dark. It's really dark at the bottom, and then it's getting lighter and lighter as the amount of the of the liquid is getting down. And at the top, you have almost like a again like a white, a white white foam. So who likes uh, Guinness? Okay. 
Okay. So that's the, the color of the of the foam. Yeah. So here you have the you have the Guinness and the Guinness. I mean, it's dark because almost like uh, all the wavelengths are absorbed in the in the beer. And the wavelengths. Uh, so the absorption depends on the on the chemistry because the absorption happens on on the molecules of the beer. So it depends on like uh, how you uh, how you prepare the the, the sugar, uh, how you uh, prepare the, these these basic components of the uh, of the beer. Okay, so now beer opening. Uh, I have actually started with that, but if you open beer, you use a very simple machine, uh, which is uh, which is called a, a, a lever. So there is this. Uh, uh, the lever is known from uh, really old uh, old times, and Archimedes says that uh, give me a lever long enough. And, uh, and a fulcrum uh, on which to place it, and I shall move uh, the world. So you can see this, this again, nice picture from, uh, from, from Daniel Shire. Mm -hmm. And you use the, the lever everywhere. So, I mean, I have, this is a normal opener. So if I'm opening a beer, so this is the, this is the, the hinge or, or fulcrum, and this is one part of the, of the lever, and then this is the, the longer part of the lever. So uh, I can make, you know, I can open the beer by that. Same thing is actually here on the beer can. Again, there is a, there is the the fulcrum, and and this long thing is the is the is the lever. So again, you are using physics just to open open the beer. But there are like a thousand uh, ways how to open a beer. You can use like a two beers to open it. You can actually open a beer with a with a with a paper, which is nice. But I'm not going to to show you. Okay, so now we'll do another experiment, and. Uh, the question is if it's safe to open beer. So when it's basically to recognize when the beer is, is, is pressurized. I should do this experiment first with the Guinness. Okay. So, so I hope that you can see it. So this uh, table is a bit, uh, bit tilted and I have uh, two cans of the, of the, same, of the same beer. And so I'll put them here and let them roll. And you can see that they are, yeah, those they are around the same, they have around the same, uh, same speed. But now, so I'll ask uh, somebody from the audience. Yeah. Uh, so so I shake one? Yeah, you can, so I will turn, you can shake, shake one. And then I will try to open the one that I think it was most chunky. Please don't shake both of them. <laughs> okay, are you done? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now you can see that one of them was much faster than the other one. So this one was the faster which means that I will open this one. Cheers. Cheers. Somebody wants another beer? <laughs> okay. So what's the, what's the physics uh, behind this? So it's all about the energy conservation. So the energy con conservation is one of the most uh, fundamental law uh, in, in nature. And it tells us that the energy can, cannot disappear, but it can just change uh, forms. So let's imagine this uh, simple experiment. So you put a car on top of some, some tower. You might think this is, a, this is a crazy experiment and it doesn't exist in the future, but something like that is actually maybe like a 200 meters far, far from me, uh, like on the on the parking wall here. Okay, so in this uh, in this in this uh, this picture, the car is not moving, and it has some potential energy, so it is at some uh, at some height. Okay, so now I will I will push the car uh, from the tower, and the potential energy is decreasing, but the kinetic energy is increasing because the speed of the car is is increasing. So the total amount is the same, but I'm just changing the energy from one form to another form. 
So then the car is falling, the kinetic, the kinetic energy is increasing even more and even more. And now the car hits the ground and the energy has to, again, change into something and it will change to some form of the deformation. Okay, but the total amount of energy is, is, is conserved, which is, which, is, uh, which is the basic law of the, of the nature. And something like that happens with those, with those uh, beers that, uh, that move on, this, on this tilted desk. So on the left, you can see the picture of the beer that was not pressurized, was not, not, not shaken. So you can see there is this like a bubble of, of air that is still in the, in the can. And then the rest of the beer is just, uh, uh, just below uh, that, uh, that bubble. And when, when, you, when you let it roll, basically the, the, this, uh, this bubble will still uh, be at the top. The beer will be under, underneath it and it will not rotate with the, with the can. Why if you pressurize it, then the, basically the, the beer will try to rotate with, with the can, which means that the part of the energy in this, uh, in this shaken beer will be transformed to the rotation energy of the beer. It will, the, the beer will not just move with the can, but it will also rotate within the, within the can. So that's just, uh, so it was a ex small experiment that you can try home if you have two uh, cans of the beers. And uh, if you have this uh, tilted, you can just, you know, tilt your table a bit. Okay, so now a bit on the side, because I'm particle physicist working on Atlas experiment, I would like to just show you that uh, if we would do this experiment at very, very small scales, uh, in, inside, for example, an atom, if we would, you know, squeeze ourselves and, and, and do it at like a very, very, in, 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 a, in a micro watt, it would be, the result might be really crazy. So we have this car that is hitting uh, ground and the energy will not transform only to some deformation, but actually we can make a mass out, out of it. So we probably know this uh, famous Einstein formula that the uh, E is uh, mc square. You can just uh, forget about the, the, the c square, it's just the constant. And this formula is telling you that the mass is just another form of the energy. So you can change this kinetic energy of this falling car, car if you are in the world of the elementary particles, and change it to, to something really useful. For example, you can make a lot of beers out of, out of this collision in the micro world. But unfortunately, we don't live there, so we cannot do this experiment. So please don't do it uh, at your home. Don't drive your car and not try to hit some wall and then make, make a lot of beers. It will not work. Or the probability is very, very, very low. OK. So now uh, let's talk a bit about uh, phase transitions. So I will ask uh, a colleague, okay, he will go to a freezer and he will bring me uh, a bottle of, of two beers that, uh, that have been in a freezer for approximately five to six, uh, six hours. So phase transitions. So you know that uh, at some temperature, the water is, is, is liquid. Uh, if, the, if the temperature goes down, it, it, it freezes into an ice. Uh, if you increase the, the temperature, it can go to, to, to vapor. So, and these processes are called uh, phase, uh, phase transitions. But the phase transition can be actually much more dramatic. So, for example, with water, what you can do is that if the water is really in like a stable state, you can, at usual conditions, the, the water freezes at, at zero degrees Celsius. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize to people who use Fahrenheit. So I, I lived for five years in the US, but I still cannot translate Celsius to, to Fahrenheit. So water freezes at zero, but in some special conditions, you can so-called super cool it down even below zero. It will still be liquid, but then you just need like a, you know, just, just small touch, just small, you know, to push it a bit and it will suddenly change the phase transition. So let's, let's try it with this uh, Corona beer. So the Corona is actually great because it's the, 
the glass uh, is, you know, colorless. And also it's really good for this experiment. So you can actually try it at home. So now I will show you. So I have this Corona beer here. It's, it's liquid. Now I will open it and hopefully it will freeze. Okay. Okay, so it's slowly going down. I will come here. Okay. So you can see, so this, this part is, is already frozen. And, yes. and now the ice is going down. And in a couple of uh, tens of seconds, the whole thing will be, will be frozen. So this experiment might be, uh, you know, a bit dangerous because as liquid, uh, when the liquid is freezing, it also changes the volume. So with like other beers, my experience is that the, the glass can break. But if you use the Corona beer, it's actually, I've never had this problem. So you can just try it, try it at home. So it's, uh, it's almost. Mm -hmm. Martin, I'm not sure I'm seeing this one on the live stream. I can see you. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, so I have actually one more corona. Of course you do. I bet you've got more than one hidden there. Yeah. So let me let me do it again. So now it's it's liquid. Okay. And okay. So this one, this one, ah, okay. So this one was not cold enough, probably. So, but let me. So I did some pre-recording. So let me let me share it actually. Okay, so how you can see it now, so it's... Now you put some impulse to it and now it's, uh, you know, you can see that the, it's changing uh, to frozen beer from, from the top. So now I have two corona here. So this is the corona. This one is not frozen air. <laughs> okay, so I'll stop sharing the video. Okay, and let me go back to slides. Okay, so this is like a, this is the phase transition where uh, something is, is going from this like a metastable state to, to a more stable state. And actually physicists believe that something similar, but not with the beer, uh, happened also at the beginning of, uh, of our universe, just after the, the, after, after the Big Bang, that there was also the, our universe was in some sort of metastable state. 
and then it there was this transition to a stable state and some energy was a lot of energy was released and this led to a rapid expansion uh, of, of our universe and this this is called an uh, inflation so you can see it on this on this picture right right at the at the at the beginning mm -hmm. and this method is actually also used in some old generation of of particle of particle detectors that 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 we used in uh, in bubble chambers okay so uh, last experiment that uh, that I will do uh, is uh, a bit of explosion because, like every physics show, should be a bit uh, with an explosion. Uh, I think. So let me try this one. Okay. So I have I have uh, just. Uh, Two bottles of beer, and the idea is that I will open the one, and then I will hit the top of the bottom one with the with the top one, and there will be a shock wave, and the shock wave will go within the beer up and down, and as it's going, it will break uh, bubbles that are in the beer to more small bubbles, and then those bubbles uh, they uh, accept ba basically some CO2 that is in the in the beer, the, the CO2 ev evaporates from the beer to those bubbles. The bubbles are expanding, and then these these waves, as as go through the beer, they uh, they destroy uh, these bubbles. They make a, a higher number of, of of small bubbles, and yeah. So let me let me do it. I was again show uh, talking without uh, sharing the slides. So let me try this. Okay. So I have ruined another beer. So that was that was last experiment uh, that I can show you. But there are actually a few things I would like to talk about, and one of them is the is the art how to tap uh, how to do the tapping of the of the beer because it's a, it's a big thing here in Czech Republic. If you go to a to a pub to get really like a nice uh, nice beer. So the first thing is the foam stability. So you can ask why, uh, for example, why the, the foam of the beer is stable with respect to other other beverages. So for example, if you, if you pour uh, some uh, some water with, with CO2, the bubbles are not the bubbles are not stable. The same thing uh, if you do with uh, some some wine, uh, some sparkling wine. Again, if you if you pour a coke, you can try it at home. Uh, you will get some foam, but it will it will it will dissolve within like a couple of seconds. But on a beer, it's it's really stable. I mean, I open this beer and there is still a lot of lot of foam in it. Mm -hmm. So why is that? So so water, uh, this sparkling water has CO2. The and the sparkling wine has CO2 and alcohol. The uh, uh, the coke has sugar and CO2. So beer has CO2, alcohol, water, and sugar. So what, what else is there in the beer that makes foam stable? And the answer is uh, a protein. So there are some proteins that make the beer stable. So let me share the slide again. So you can imagine you have the, you have the bubble and there are the foams and they will create like a small strings uh, at the surface of the bubble and they will keep it, keep it stable. And you can, for example, ask what about milk? Because in the milk, we also have also proteins. But the problem is with the milk is that there is no alcohol. So you still need some alcohol to make the stable foam. So if you can, you can actually try it at home, you can take some, some, some milk you can put a bit of alcohol in it to make it as alcoholic as, as beer. That's like at the optimal. And then you will be actually able to create quite stable, stable foam. So I, I advocate that you can you, to, you try it at home to make an alcoholic, alcoholic uh, milk, but I would uh, recommend not to drink it. I mean, you can try, but it will probably taste really, really, uh, really weird. Okay. Then something about the foam stability is that uh, the foam doesn't like 
uh, anything that is greasy, any, anything like fatty, which means that it's really important if you go to a bar that the, the glass is really, is really washed, it's, it's really clean. Because if, if there is some grease, uh, uh, some oil on it, uh, the, the foam won't be stable. You can test it. I mean, uh, uh, if, for example, you, you, you take a bit of oil and you will tap a nice beer and then you will you know, mix it with your, with your finger that is like oily, then you will see that, that the foam will basically dissolve almost, almost immediately. So try it, uh, try it at home again. OK. Uh, so what, what else we have? OK. And the last experiment that you can, again, do at home uh, is uh, you can try to measure how much CO2 is in one can uh, of beer. So you should get the answer is something about, about uh, twice as the amount of the beer. So here I have a half liter of beer. So inside there should be about one liter of, uh, of CO2. So what you can do is that you can just take a, a plastic bag and just just uh, put it uh, put it on. Yeah, you can just take a plastic bag, put it uh, put it on the beer, try to try to remove all the all the air from the from the from the bag, and then you can try to try to open it. Uh, I will not ruin another beer. I have, I have opened a lot of beers, and I have only a limited number of people here in the room to to drink. <laughs> Okay, so that's actually all from uh, from me and from this uh, this small beer workshop. So I hope that you you enjoy it. And I don't know, Connie, if uh, there is some some discussion at this point. Thank and you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers to everybody. You've got quite an audience there watching with lots of heated discussion going on in the chat. Um, obviously very popular. Uh, well done for doing that because I know it's not easy going between the slides and the beers and the and the video. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. No, yeah. it's very interesting. And anybody who is in Prague at the moment can see Martin do this live tomorrow night at the Cross Club in Prague where they will be doing the same workshop and a couple of shows and the live DJ stream from the CERN Control Center with um, Kaleidoscope Music. You can find that on the program for the Big Bang stage for the final event of the conference tomorrow night. Now, Martin, do we have questions? Yes, we do. The first one, um, I don't recall you saying you could do this, but maybe it's a challenge. Can you show us how to open a beer with paper? Oh, okay, I can try it. So really? Papier, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll ask somebody to bring me a paper, and if there's another question... Yes, there's other questions. So, um, can you do the same kind of experiments with other alcohols? I think you can do a lot of experiments with other <laughs> alcohols. Yeah, I mean, beer is a bit specific, but yeah, you can definitely, you know, you can think about physics of like other alcohol, about uh, the colors and, and some, some properties. Beer is nice because it doesn't have like a lot of alcohol, so you can do this experiment with like a freezing and, and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that there are some other experiments. So now I have, I have, few, I have a few, uh, yeah, uh, I have some paper here. So if you are, if you end up on like a, on island without like anything and you have a one, one beer and, 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 and a map, for example, you can, you can what you can do uh, is, is take the paper and fold it like a, fold it like a many times. So I cannot promise that it will it will work. I will I will do my best. Okay. Okay. So you'll get something like like this. That is, you know. Uh, okay. Quite thick. Yeah. Quite thick. Yeah. So let me, okay. okay. This is challenging. Uh, the audience are challenging you. Yeah, okay, maybe I need one more. <laughs> so 
So again, you will use a lever. Ah. So maybe you couldn't hear it, but there was some gas coming out of the beer already. Ah. Oh. Come on. Nearly. <laughs> Tell me when you want to move on to some other questions. Okay, let's move to other questions. I will, I will, I will be trying, but. And, and you can continue doing that one live in the cross club tomorrow night. Okay, okay. I think that... um, another question. Okay. What temperature must the beer be at for the phase transition trick? I think it's like a minus four Celsius. That's what I tested in the fridge, minus four, minus five. But what I would recommend really is like a grab a couple of beers, put them into the fridge. They should be like, a, be sure that there are no bubbles at the top, because if there are some bubbles, it will, it will freeze. And then if you are lucky, you know, you will get like a maybe, yeah, like a 50, 70% of the beers not frozen and you can experiment. Mm -hmm. So Amanda wants to know, why does the flavor of the same beer change when it's in a glass bottle and a can? Okay, uh, so one thing that, uh, okay, I don't, I don't have an answer that, I don't know the exact answer. One thing that changes the flavor of the beer, for example, is uh, if you put it uh, on light. So that's the reason why most of the bottles are not like, uh, has, some, has some color to basically, it, the, 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 uh, the, the bottle behaves like sunglasses, they, they protect the beer. And if it's in the can, then, you know, this is like 100% protection. This is like, I don't know, 70% protection. So that might, have some, that might have some impact on the taste, but that's just my, my guess. Maybe, you know, the preparation is a bit different. Uh, the pressurize might be a bit different. I, I'm not sure. Okay, um, and a cheeky question from Rachel here. Have you ever made any bets in the pub with the shake the beer and identify which can will not explode? If so, how much money can you make? I have never done that. So, ah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I'm sorry. Maybe something to try out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm looking forward to um, to seeing this live. Hopefully, when we come back to Prague in uh, for ICEP 2024, and also to the, hopefully another music festival because it is very popular in the science pavilions. We're usually uh, uh, sold out for for this workshop. Uh, I want to thank you, Martin, very very much for your your work. I know you're an essential part of the ICEP organizing team as well want to say thank you. Uh, thank you to our audience. And we will, at the top of the hour, be moving on to our final uh, guest keynote speaker. It's an actual, real astronaut. Your chance to listen to Swiss astronaut Claude Nicolier talk about 30 years of Hubble, uh, SpaceX, and ask him questions live, straight answer. Again, thank you very much, Martin, and good luck with Cross Club tomorrow Great. night. Thank you, and thank you for watching. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.